2023-2024 Annual Determination Letter, Timeline Compliance, using Monitoring Report 16.21 to identify your students. The 2023-2024 Annual Determination Letter, Timeline Compliance section included counts of students in the following categories, overdue annual plan reviews, overdue eligibility re-evaluations, and overdue initial evaluations. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to use Report 1621, Late Plan Reviews and Eligibility Reevaluations, to identify the students that were included in the Overdue Plan Review and Eligibility Reevaluation categories on the Annual Determination Letter. Identifying these students and their associated monitoring categories is crucial because we will be pulling data for these students again in August after the CalPAD's end of year amendment window closes to verify compliance with statutory timelines. So here we are at the CalPAD's homepage, and on the left, we want to click on Reports and Accountability Monitoring Reports. Then select Monitoring Report 1621. The report page will load and show all of the available filters. Typically, it is recommended to leave all the filters as they are, and later we will get into some of the filters you might want to use. For the purposes of reconciling your Census Day student list with your February 13th student list, the only filters we want to adjust are the as of filters. First, we want to select Census Day. So we select October 4, which was Census Day for this school year, and click View Report. It may take a few moments for this report to load. Once it does load, You'll click on the save icon here, and you'll want to choose uh, CSV. Uh, CSV is basically a text uh, spreadsheet that will allow you to sort and filter and manipulate the data. Uh, whereas if you were to download it in an Excel format, while the tables look nice and everything is very readable, uh, it's not very useful for manipulating your data. So once this report loads, you would want to download it as a CSV. Uh, and you can click on this. I can't scroll too much lower because there is student information. Uh, click on CSV and uh, name the file. Save it to a location you plan to work in. Uh, I named my file Census Day. Once that finishes downloading, you can change the date to February 13th up here. That's the date where you want to compare and find students that were enrolled uh, on both days. That is who. Uh, that is the student list that was looked at for the annual determination letters. Once this report loads, do the same thing. Click on the Save icon, choose CSV. I saved this as February 13th. Once you have the two CSV files, locate them on your computer and open them both like I've done here. So you see I have two CSV files, Census Day on the left, February 13th on the right. Uh, for ease of use, we want to combine both sheets into one Excel workbook. It's very simple. You click on the, the name of the worksheet down at the bottom here, February 13th, and drag it over to your Census Day document and let go. And see, once you do that, you've combined both tables into one workbook. Uh, and I have that combined workbook here uh, already saved. And this is, you can look back and forth between your census day and your February 13th data. Uh, now that we have this put together, uh, we can use VLOOKUP to identify students on the February 13th table that are also on your census day table. And so what we wanna do is create an empty column to the right of the meeting information. So in this particular report, uh, column AC is the one that uh, is the last sort of meeting information column. So I'm just going to insert a blank column there. And we're just going to call this lookup. So this, so this is where we can um, enter the formula that is going to look up the data in the census date table. So type equals v lookup. 
and open parentheses, and we want to tell uh, Excel what value to look for. So we want to look for matching SSIDs. So we're going to click on this first SSID. That's the value we want to look up in the census day table. Right. Uh, add a comma, and now it's asking for the table array. And what that is is the data in the census day uh, worksheet that you want this formula to look at. And you, in order for this formula to work, the data field that you want to match has to be the leftmost column. So it's going to be that SSID column. And we want to select all of those. And then we also want to bring that over to uh, column AC to include the meeting information. So once you have all of that selected, you can see up here in the formula bar, uh, the formula in my worksheet is K2 colon AC2408. So one important thing to note is if you leave this formula just as it is and you copy it down your Excel sheet, uh, at a certain point, it's going to start returning bad values because you're also moving the reference cells down. So what you want to do is once you have that selection made, uh, hit F4 on your keyboard. And now you can see those dollar symbols that have been added to the formula. That tells Excel to only look at those cells in the reference. Now add a comma, and it's asking you where the the value is that you're, you're wanting to return in this uh, selected set of data. And so we want it to return column one, which is the SSID. Uh, and finally, it's asking if you want to return approximate matches or exact matches. Uh, in our case, we want exact matches only, so we choose false. And then close the parentheses, and that is our formula. So we hit Enter. And it may take a moment to return the value, but we can see over here in the field that this SSID is a match. Now, in order to copy this formula for the rest of your results in the February 13th file, you can double click on when the, the arrow or the plus, the big plus turns into a smaller plus. If you double click, it will copy the entire formula all the way down your spreadsheet. So you don't have to click and drag and wait for the page to load. This is a very simple way to do to do this, and it copies it all the way down. So now that we've got the lookup values, so we can identify the students in our February 13th worksheet that were also present on Census Day, we're going to need to filter our data. Uh, to do that, you can go to Sort and Filter in the Home ribbon and click on Filter. You can also find this in the data tab of the ribbon and click on filter there. And essentially we want to filter we want to filter the columns by particular values. So make sure you just have a single cell in the top row selected and click filter. It would apply the filter functionality to every row or every column. Uh, once you've done that, click on the drop down under your lookup. And we want to get rid of the NA values. Those are values that did not match. Those are values that did not have an enrollment on census day. So then we click OK. And we see that all of the SSIDs are now in a matching uh, status. There, is, there are no more uh, NA fields. Uh, additionally, we want to look at the monitoring category. So in for the purposes of looking to find the students in your annual determination letter, we want to look at overdue plan reviews and overdue reevaluations. So we can filter this way. And we want to remove plan review held late, reevaluation held late, and timely. Uh, those are uh, fields uh, or categories that we can look at for other purposes. But for right now, we just want to see the overdues. So with that set, now you're only looking at overdue reevaluations or overdue plan reviews. You can expand the columns here to see uh, how far overdue these meetings are. 
uh, and any other information if there are any pendings uh, or, or there are no pendings uh, or anything else. So these are going to be the students. I'm going to move over to see the SSIDs. These are your students that that made up your annual determination letter. This LEA returned quite a few values, but this is what you would need to do uh, in order to identify the students that are on your annual determination letters.